Meal preps can look overwhelming sometimes. This week, I'm going to show you a very simple prep that pulls meals that you and your family will love together in 20 minutes. Hey there, friends. So lately, I have been thinking about time. And with summer coming closer to an end and we've got school starting soon, it just feels like we don't have enough time in the day to get everything accomplished especially when it comes to meal preps. Meal preps obviously save us time, but even having quick, easy meal ideas that are healthy and that are easy to prepare are super, super helpful. So this week I decided to give you all a theme of 20 minute meals. These meals take around 20 minutes to prepare. So whether you decide to grab a meal out of this meal plan and just use it in your weekly cooking, or you decide to do a prep like I'm gonna be doing today, it's going to make a very short prep and it's also going to make a very short meal if you decide to cook it in the evening. I know for myself, it's often a lot less stressful if I know I've got something easy and something that's not gonna take hours and hours. So the first thing that we are going to prep is Monday, and this meal is something I would not recommend prepping super far in advance because we are working with hard shell tacos and you don't want them to get stale or soft. So this meal we're gonna actually be eating this evening, which works out perfectly. But if you were going to be making a dinner right you know, then and there, you're just baking it up, you don't have to worry about the idea of these sitting in the refrigerator for a while. So we are going to do some baked chicken tacos for Monday. This one is so simple and very versatile as well. So all you're gonna do is line up some hard shell tacos just like this. You can fill it in however works best for the pan that you're using. I'm gonna try to stick as many in here as I can so they stay standing. And the little trick to this is to get the hard shell tacos that have the flat bottom so that you are able to keep it all standing in here. Now, this is where you can choose your protein. You can choose something fast and easy like a rotisserie chicken, or you can fry up some meat. That's gonna take a little extra time, so take, keep that in mind. But I actually do home canned shredded chicken. So I'm actually just going to drain this off into um, something over here, and then we're gonna load up the tacos with the chicken. A super simple way to season this chicken would be with a taco packet seasoning. I don't have that on hand. So all I'm gonna do is add in a little shake of cumin and some smoked paprika, one of my favorite things. Love smoked paprika. And then I'm going to also add in a little bit of salt as well to this. And then we're just gonna mix it all around. I did rinse this chicken as well find that that works really well um, to help it have a little bit of a fresher taste when you're using canned meats. It's great to just rinse it a little bit. So we're just gonna make sure that the seasoning is covered all around. I'm starting to use a feature here on YouTube that I haven't really used much before, and that is chapters or sectioning out my videos. So if you put your finger down on the play bar at the bottom of this video, you're able to jump from recipe to recipe and find what you're looking for if you're here for a specific recipe or maybe you're returning to this video to look for a specific recipe. Like I said, you can definitely use any type of protein you want to. You can make fish tacos this way. You could get canned salmon and do it that way. You could use pork. Um, ground beef, really anything. I feel like every type of taco is made <laughs> out there. They've used all types of protein. You could use a meat alternative if you're vegan or vegetarian and you're able to just prep them and make it all really, really fast, which I think is perfect. have a few tomatoes from my garden, my little patio garden, that I'm going to cut up here just to have some fresh tomatoes besides the salsa that we'll be using. And I'm also going to cut up some green onion. Now we're not gonna put the green onion on now. I'm going to actually put that into a little baggie so that we can sprinkle it on 
when it's done being baked, but at least it'll be chopped up and inside of the pan for me to remove before I pop it in the oven. And I am able to use it after it comes out of the oven. Okay, so this is where you can play around with whatever you wanna put on it. I would love it if I had some fresh jalapenos for this, but I don't have any right now. We are going to add in some beans. You can do any type of beans you want to. My sweet neighbor lady actually gave me a couple jars of her home canned beans. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some of those right in. And our family's not crazy about beans. <laughs> but I'm trying to get them in our diet. And I think that's one benefit to meal prepping ahead of time is that you are able to plan out, you know, sneaking some healthy things in and it's not forgotten by the wayside, which I think is really, really a game changer whenever it comes to trying to get a healthier diet happening in your family. Now, just to add a bit more moisture to our chicken that we've put in here, I'm going to drizzle just a little bit of olive oil in each taco so that we don't end up with dry chicken. And obviously the olive oil gives excellent flavor as well. Next, I'm going to take some of this great Jack's Cantina Salsa from Costco that I got this past time I went. It needs to be used up. It hasn't been eaten as fast as I hoped, so this is a great way to use it up. I am going to kind of drain it as I pull some out so we don't have too much liquid sitting in the bottom of these tacos. The other thing that I will be serving with these whenever we make them is we will also have some sour cream to top them off with as well. You can easily grab a bag of pre-shredded cheese if you want to for these to make this even easier. I like to shred my own cheese because I like the way that it melts. You can also use whatever type of cheese you want to. I had a bunch of cheddar that I wanted to get used up. So I'm just going to be using that in these. And this meal can easily be made into a large family meal as well because you can just double it. You can put out as many tacos as your family needs. You can put it onto a sheet pan. Um, you could put two nine by 13 pans in the oven. This would be a great meal even for um, last minute company, you know, having guests over events and other things like that. I just have to make note that this meal also is super budget friendly, such a budget friendly meal, and it really can give you a break in your week if you are trying to get all your meals squeezed into a specific budget. And of course you can decide again on the protein, so maybe you can work with a protein that you already have in your pantry and you can make it as health conscious as you want to as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put the fresh tomatoes on top of here just to help bring in some color. You all know I'm always about making the meals look delicious, even if they are budget friendly. <laughs> um, love making everything look appetizing because we kind of decide with our eyes what a meal is gonna be like before we decide with our taste buds. All right, so see how quick and easy that was? As I was planning out these 20 minute meals, I just really thought about how fast you can prepare something. So I'm going to put this in to here, 
and then we'll just pull that out before we pop it in the oven, obviously take the lid off and all of that. So I did want to kind of round out this meal a little bit with a few more veggies. So we're gonna pull together a really quick cabbage salad to go along with this. My husband loves cabbage salads and actually I do too. Obviously you have the traditional coleslaw, but I ran across this recipe and I think it's going to be a really, really good one. It's kind of a sweet and sour in some sense. So we're gonna go with two tablespoons of quite a few of these ingredients. Super easy, you're gonna watch me throw this together in minutes. So we want two tablespoons of sour cream and I'm just eyeballing it here, not getting too crazy with my measurements. And then we are gonna also do two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Again, I'm just eyeballing it, but if you wanna get out your measuring spoon, you definitely can. And then you're also gonna go with two tablespoons of honey. Now this is raw honey, and I actually just pulled this out of my cellar because I was out of what I usually have up here in the kitchen. And that was my coffee pot telling me it's done heating. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and drizzle this right in here. I'm gonna grab another tablespoon's worth or so. All right, that looks about good. And now I'm also going to put in about two tablespoons worth of vinegar. Now I keep the recipes linked below. The recipe you will find has apple cider vinegar in it, but if you've watched for a while, you know that we really enjoy rice vinegar. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that in this, and then we are going to put in some garlic powder as well. Not too much, just a little bit. And then I'm going to kind of stir some of this together before we start adding in some more of the larger ingredients. Oh, this, the smell, wow, so delicious. So I'm actually gonna use the green onions that we chopped the green part off for the tacos. And I'm going to take my kitchen scissors here. Don't underestimate how much you can use them in the kitchen, there's so much you can use them for. And I'm just going to cut small pieces of the lighter green part of the onion off here to mix in. I love green onion. I use it in so much. Um, I often get it almost every time I go grocery shopping. So I'm just going to trim up about what I feel will be good in this salad. And the real time saver in this recipe is getting a bag of pre-shredded cabbage and carrot that you can find for a couple dollars in your produce section. And along with the green onion, I also have some fresh dill here, which to me just smells like summer. Oh, so, so delicious. I love using fresh dill. It's one of my favorite herbs by far. And I'm just taking the scissors and chopping it like this as well. Just to save me a little bit of time. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just open this up and dump it in here. We're gonna stir everything together. So you wanna make the sauce in the bottom of the bowl just so it's well combined before adding in the cabbage mixture. Before I stir all of this together, I'm going to sprinkle in some sesame seeds. You can use black or regular. And now we're just gonna stir everything together. And I'm so glad I'm making this in advance because I've said this a lot of times here on my channel, but if you make cold salads, make them in advance. They are just so much better. Gives time to the allow the flavors to combine while it's sitting in the refrigerator and it just really is a whole lot tastier like this. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into a container so that it can go in the refrigerator until we're ready for dinner with the tacos. Since I am not baking this meal right now, the tacos, I'm gonna go ahead and insert a clip once I have it baked here so you can see the finished product of this meal. Okay, we are moving on to Tuesday's meal. Again, another 20 minute meal. I'm gonna turn on my skillet back here and add a little bit of avocado oil to my skillet. Even though it's already oiled because it's cast iron, I store it oiled. And we are going to make a sausage and zucchini 
skillet meal and it's not gonna take us long at all. One of the things that helps out is that we have these pre-cooked sausages. You all know I talk about these a lot in my Costco hauls. Um, they are an Amy Lou brand and this is the roasted garlic and Asiago. I actually store them in my freezer so I just got them out of the freezer. Um, yesterday, I think, or the day before, put them in the refrigerator and we just let them thaw out in there. And what we are gonna do is just open these up and we're going to slice these into bite-sized pieces. We're gonna start out by putting the sausages in the skillet first and then we will work on the veggies. So you could use any type of sausage you want to. It doesn't have to be this particular kind. We really enjoy, or I personally really enjoy, chicken or turkey sausage instead of pork. And so that's often what I have around. So I'm just cutting these into small bite-sized pieces. Now these do have a cheese inside of them, so I'm not going to fry them super long. I'm just gonna get the outsides crisp up just a little bit because if I fry them for a long time, the cheese is going to melt everywhere. So it's going to add to the way the consistency of this stir fry lands in the end because there is cheese inside the sausage. Pre-cooked sausages are such a great quick and easy go-to protein for busy days and that is one reason I like to keep them in the freezer. They just help me out a whole lot whenever I need a fast meal like this one. So exciting enough, my patio garden has started to produce a little harvest for us and it's been so fun to pick tomatoes and I actually was able to get the zucchini I needed for this recipe from my patio garden. So I have zucchini over here that we're gonna be chopping up in just a second and I grew it in my pots on my patio which is so fun and exciting. And I will be sure to leave the link to the video of planting and creating my patio garden here in the description box in case you're interested in trying that yourself or you don't have space for a full-size garden. It's so easy and simple to keep up with whenever it's right outside your door. Okay, so while the skillet is heating up, I just picked this green zucchini and, or I guess this is zucchini, this is yellow squash or summer squash, I believe if I have the names all right, but it was out in the sun and it is all warm from growing in the sun. I've been keeping my eye on it the last couple of days because I wanted it to get a little bit bigger um, to be able to use in this recipe. So we are gonna dice all of this up. We have an onion here as well and a red bell pepper and I'm just gonna pile everything here because we are going to remove the sausage while we fry the veggies, just because we don't aren't gonna fry them the same amount of time. And it's nice to have that sausage done first because then you have flavor in the pan for um, the veggies to kind of soak up as they saute. So one of the keys to making meals like 20 minute meals, quick meals, is to definitely multitask. So I'm hoping to have this all cut up by the time I need to pull the um, sausage off the pan. Okay, so our sausage is, well, the cheese is melting out of it. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just pull it off. The cheese has spread all over the sausage, which is gonna bring an extra yum to this dish. I didn't really think about that when I pulled out this particular sausage to use in this, but it's still gonna work out fine. So I'm just going to empty 
the skillet out. It's got lots of good little crispy pieces from the sausage and from the cheese now. And then we are going to go ahead and add in our veggies. However, before we add in the veggies, I'm actually gonna add a bit more avocado oil to this just so that the veggies and the cheese don't end up sticking to the pan. And I'm also going to put in my onion. I did cut up the onion, cut it into pretty big pieces. I'm gonna put that in first. Give that just a couple of minutes because I know that it's gonna take just a bit more time for this onion to fry than it is going to be for the zucchini. I could put in the pepper as well, the red bell pepper, but I like that a little crunchy. So I'm gonna leave that more to the cooking time of the zucchini. And I'm also going to add just a bit of salt into this as well over top of my onion. And we're just gonna give this a couple of minutes. I'm gonna take my spatula here and try to break up the onion just because a lot of the layers are still stuck together and just to get it to fry quickly and evenly if the layers are separated. So for those of you that always wonder how I do it all, I just want you guys to know that off, of, off camera while I've been cooking these meals, I actually um, the girls are watching a history lesson right now. And yes, we do do some school over the summer just because I feel like we take off time for other things during the winter. And I also don't want them to lose their routine of learning things through the summer. So we do some. Um, it's not quite as full-fledged as the winter just simply because we have a lot of activities in the summer as well but they've been coming through and telling me about their lesson and filling out their worksheets and stuff in between things. I just pause and do that. So I just want to pop that in there because I know many of you ask me, how do you do YouTube and homeschool and do all the things that you do? And that's just how I do it. It all gets interwoven together into the great basket of my life. <laughs> and so, I just have to kind of go with the flow and be flexible and allow myself to be flexible to get it all done. And lots of coffee go into <laughs> what all I do. Had to pop that in there. All right, we're ready to add in this beautiful plate of veggies to our skillet. And I did add just a bit more oil, Oop, losing a couple of pieces here. Just a bit more oil to the bottom of the pan, but now we're gonna have a lot of moisture coming into the pan with all of this zucchini. Zucchini has lots and lots of water, and if you ever grow it on a patio, um, or in a pot, or in a raised bed, like I am on my patio, you do have to make sure that you water the plants a lot because the produce that it's producing, <laughs> zucchini, is made up of a lot of water. So now this moisture is gonna help take all of that little bits of brown off the bottom of the pan that the cheese left behind, and we're gonna season this as well. All right, we're gonna add in some basil and some oregano. I had an oregano plant, and it's up on the hill behind our old farmhouse here, but I just, I'm not gonna go out and get it, so I decided I'm just gonna add it in like this, some dried. So we're giving a bit of an Italian flair to all of this. And then I'm also going to add in a little bit of dried parsley and giving those great herb flavors into this. And would it really be a video from my kitchen without the buttery steakhouse seasoning. <laughs> if you know, you know, that's all I'm gonna say. All right, so I'm just gonna shake that in and we're gonna let this all stir fry up. Look at these gorgeous colors in a 20 minute meal. I mean, really, can you get a better looking quickie meal, especially these summertime colors, you just know it's summer when you see that yellow squash coming out. Now you can decide if you want these to be softer, if you want them to be a bit more firm, whatever you like as far as your texture when it comes to the zucchini. And I am about where I like it, so I'm just adding back in the sausage 
and we're gonna let that flavor combine just a little bit and then we will be ready to put this into a storage container and the reheat method I will use for this is going to be to put it back into the skillet and just bring everything to a heated point and we're ready to eat this delicious summer skillet meal. We're moving on to Thursday and we're doing a lemon ricotta pasta and I'm adding in some chicken just to give extra protein. And you guys, for those of you that watch regularly, I'm remembering to zest my lemon before I juice it. I usually forget and then I'm trying to zest a chopped in half lemon that's already been juiced and it's a little bit hard. <laughs> so I actually just use this to grate up some Parmesan that's gonna go in this as well. And I'm just gonna take my lemon across here and just get a little bit of zest that we will be adding in a bit later. So this is probably the easiest pasta dish I've ever made. And it sounds so fresh and just summer-esque and really, really delicious. We usually make our pasta with gluten-free pastas of some kind. And so I have some up here on my shelf in some canisters, but this recipe calls for a pound of pasta and each canister has half a pound in it. So it's going to be a mixture of pasta types, which is really no problem unless you really like it to look all the same. But you know what? Sometimes practicality wins over beauty. <laughs> okay, so now I can take my lemon, cut it in half, and we're gonna juice it to get a little bit of fresh lemon juice to go into this pasta sauce we're about to whip up. We're going to actually mix up this pasta sauce before we have the pasta completely ready. That way, as soon as it's ready, we can dump this right in. I have 15 ounces of whole milk ricotta and that comes right out. I didn't know if it would stick or not. We have two third cup of shredded Parmesan. Oh my, I am making a mess in the kitchen today. <laughs> One third cup of olive oil. a tablespoon of lemon zest. That's about what we have here. We could have maybe gotten a bit more. And about two tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Before we whisk it all together, I have a little bit of thawed out minced garlic from my little cubes I keep in the freezer. Love a little bit of frozen garlic, helps me out a lot. And then we're also going to add in some oregano. I'm not gonna measure it, I'm just gonna sprinkle it right in. Give it a little bit of an herb taste. And then I'm going to take my whisk and whisk this all together. My water is almost to a boil, so I can add in my pasta as well. And then this is just going to create a nice creamy consistency that we can then add into the pot, the hot pasta once it's done cooking and it's going to melt in nicely. Up here, I have a couple canisters with some pasta since I like to buy it in bulk. So I have this more curly pasta and I have this, it's kind of like a macaroni, but it has little ridges in it. So we're gonna mix these two together for our dish. Okay, so we are in the last minute of boiling the pasta and I'm going to go ahead and add in just a couple handfuls of baby spinach. Ooh. Just to add some veggie and some color to this pasta dish. So we're just adding it in. There's about 30 seconds left on the boiling time for the pasta 
and we're going to drain it with the pasta. So we're gonna reserve about a cup to a cup and a half of the pasta water to add back in to our pasta sauce. All right, I have the water and the pasta in back in the pot, and then I have some chicken, and this is chicken that I've previously cooked up it's in bite-sized pieces and it was in my freezer. I've been doing this lately, you know, in the grocery store, they often have grilled chicken or pre-cooked chicken in the freezer section. And I decided I probably can make it taste a good bit better and make my own freezer chicken. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing. And on days like today, we're trying to do quick 20 minute meals. We are able to pull them out and use it to add protein to a dish like this. I'm also adding in the sauce and we're gonna let everything cook and simmer together. We're gonna let that garlic cook that is in here and let everything get nice and creamy. I can really, really smell the lemon in this, which is such a great scent and going to be such a fantastic flavor in a pasta dish. I think it's gonna bring a lighter note to pasta, a lot of times pasta is really heavy. And I think this is gonna bring a fantastic light flavor to this delicious pasta dish. Now we are gonna make Thursday's meal. I actually remembered that I am doing this for Thursday and we're doing the pasta dish for Wednesday. At whenever I introduced the meal, I said Thursday, and this is definitely Thursday's meal. That was Wednesday's meal. So we're headed into Thursday. We are gonna be making some honey sriracha turkey bowls. So to start that out, I'm heating up my skillet here with the oil in it. We are gonna put some frozen broccoli florets into the skillet. We're actually gonna give this broccoli a little bit of time in the skillet because we want the one side at least to get a little bit seared. And so we're gonna let it sit in place without stirring it around for a few minutes just to let that little bit of char get onto the broccoli. And then we will head in to frying up the turkey. Now, I often try to tell you when I make changes to recipes, especially whenever they're linked in the description box, this recipe is originally made with ground chicken. I don't normally buy ground chicken, but we do enjoy ground turkey once in a while. So I'm going to be making this recipe with ground turkey instead of ground chicken. So it's been a little bit and I've let the garlic, I'm sorry, the broccoli, <laughs> I've let the broccoli get a little charred. So I'm scooping that out and also just kind of let it get steamed to a bit. And then we're going to go ahead and add in a little more oil and we're going to add in our ground turkey. I am using some avocado oil because it's a little more of a neutral flavor than the olive oil. And I find that it goes better with more like Asian inspired dishes like this one. So I have a pound of ground turkey. We're gonna put that right in here and start to fry it up and then we will be adding in the sauce that goes into this as well. And it's a very, very simple sauce. Quick and easy meals is the name of the game this week. The ground turkey is almost completely cooked through, so I'm gonna add a fourth cup of sweet chili sauce to this, and it's gonna start making a nice, sticky, yummy sauce that you think of when you think of honey sriracha, for sure. We're gonna put about two tablespoons of honey into the pan as well. And then we're going to add in about the amount of sriracha that you want in heat. If you eat sriracha a lot, you know that it can really quickly get really, really hot. So I'm going to put probably about a tablespoon and a half or so for our family's liking. I don't wanna to get too spicy with it um, just because our children don't like to be on fire. They do like a little spice, but not as much as us adults would enjoy. And then I also have some sesame oil. I'm gonna be drizzling that across as well. I cook pretty often with things like sesame oil and sriracha and even 
soy sauce or I use the alternative of coconut aminos and, instead of soy sauce. Um, because I personally enjoy those flavors a lot. So I make a lot of stir fries for lunch and things like that with these things. So I know about how much to add into this amount of meat, but if you've never cooked with these things or don't cook with them very often, you are probably going to want to go by the measurements. So I'm just sort of combining the different things, getting the honey all stirred in. We're gonna let the sauce sort of cook into the meat as we go along. We're gonna also add in, whoops, I got some soy sauce or liquid aminos on the counter here. But we're also gonna add in some powdered ginger. And again, like I said, I cook with these flavors a lot in quick stir fries. So I really enjoy making things with ginger and sriracha. So we've got some garlic powder as well. We're gonna sprinkle across everything. And I'm going to just turn the heat up a little bit and get the sauce sort of simmering and thickening just a little bit. We've got a lot of liquid in the bottom of here and I wanna see it get really sticky and thicker against the meat. All right, so essentially for this recipe, we are making components to create a bowl. And so I wanted to talk about how we'll assemble the bowls on the night that we eat them. So I have these seeds of change uh, packets. Most of the time I make my own grains. I cook my own rice. I love using my homemade chicken broth that I make and can myself but we're talking about really quick meals. And so this week, if I do not have time to cook up the rice for our bowls, I will just grab some of these. It is organic and has pretty healthy ingredients in here. Plus, I love the fact that it is brown rice and quinoa mixed together. So this can be heated in the microwave, obviously, or on the stove top. And then along with that, we will combine the meat and broccoli with the rice, and then we're gonna top it off with some cut green onion and some sesame seeds. And we'll have a delicious bowl that has healthy grains, it has some veggie and a good protein. While I'm waiting for my meat to cook up, I wanted to ask you guys the question of the video. I'm gonna start doing this to help spur conversation in the comments. Since we're talking about 20 minute meals, I would love to know in the comments what meal that is quick and easy when you are in an absolute pinch and it's probably gonna be something you pull from your pantry, let's just say like spaghetti, <laughs> something that is easy when you all of a sudden realize you only have about a half hour to pull dinner together and you maybe have a busy evening ahead and you need something fast. Let us know in the comments. I would love to hear all of your ideas, your quick and go-to meal that your family sticks to and is a tried and true recipe. All right, we are on to Friday. And of course, Friday, we're done with the week. We want a little bit of a special meal. So that is what we're gonna do, but we're still gonna fit it in that 20 minute time frame of getting everything prepped quickly. And the way we're gonna do that is we are going to use some home canned potatoes. You can use store-bought, you don't have to use home canned, but this just makes the process a whole lot faster because if you know anything about cooking potatoes, they take a little while to soften up and to get fully cooked or baked. And so this just cuts that time down by a whole, whole lot. So back here, I have my big skillet cleaned up and ready to go with the potatoes. And this whole meal is basically a steak and potatoes or steak bite, butter steak bite potato skillet. I don't remember the exact <laughs> names as you can tell, but that is something what we're going for. And we're not gonna follow the recipe exactly to a T, but if you're someone that needs measurements, of course, all of that will be in the description box below. So what I'm gonna start out by doing is actually draining these potatoes because we are gonna take these out of here and as I put them into the skillet, I'm actually gonna take a knife and cut them into smaller bite-sized pieces so they're a little more around the size of our steak bites that we'll be making once these crisp up just a little bit in the skillet. 
So I am going to start out by putting some olive oil in the skillet along with the potatoes because that's going to help give them that kind of black fried look that we all really love. So we're going to start out by doing that and I'm going to add some seasoning to them as well. All right, my husband just came through and sharpened my knife for me because I'm not sure how it's gonna go cutting these steaks. I picked these up for this and they are sirloins. I'm not sure, I'm just not sure if they're going to be the best. I think I probably should have picked up some fillets, but that's okay, we're gonna work with what we have. So the potatoes are back here and I'm actually going to go ahead and just do some salt and pepper on these. The whole idea with this dish is that we are going to be using garlic butter. And I did not put butter in this skillet because it would burn the potatoes or make them stick really bad to the pan. So for the moment, there's just olive oil in here and we're gonna let these guys kind of cook in that. While that's happening, we're gonna cut our steak into bite-sized pieces. Ooh, the knife is working pretty well. <laughs> our knives get dull very quickly just because of how much cooking I do. I'm going to cut these into nice pieces that we would want to eat alongside the potatoes. And once the potatoes are cooked to where I want them, I'm going to remove them from the pan. We're going to turn our heat up and then we are going to throw the steak bites in just for a little bit because it doesn't take long for them to cook up. I'm going to pull them off of the pan and then I'm going to create my garlic butter that we will toss everything in right at the end. Now, obviously we've got potatoes, but we don't have like a real veggie in this. So for this meal, I will be also creating a toss salad to go along with it. And I wanted to tell you how I will re be reheating this. And that's another reason I don't wanna fry the steak very long either, is I will be reheating this in the air fryer and it's gonna bring the steak back to life. Air fryers are just one of the best inventions ever. I use them all the time, um, daily, daily. I was gonna say almost daily, but honestly, daily in our house, we use our air fryer and it is just so helpful. Brings things back to life that wouldn't be able to get heated up as fast in the oven. And then obviously the microwave would probably make things soggy that turn out really great with the air fryer. Okay, so our steak is cut into bite-sized pieces here. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and season it a little bit with some salt and pepper. We're gonna just let it rest a bit before we put it on to a very hot skillet. And we've got our skillet turned up a little bit beyond medium for these potatoes, but I'm gonna turn it up just a bit hotter whenever I'm ready to um, put the steak on. And we've got a nice sizzle going on. You can hear those potatoes frying, which is great. And I'm going to add the pepper to this as well. I've removed the potatoes and I'm going to go ahead and put the steak pieces in here. This I did turn up. Yes, there are bits and pieces of potato in there, but that's fine. It's all gonna just come together anyways. So we are gonna throw these in here. Ooh, I don't know if it's hot enough yet. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna throw these in here. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I didn't hear the sizzle I usually like to hear. <laughs> so I was waiting to feel it, hear it, but it was, on, it was on the side and the center is definitely very hot. So we're going to sear this and allow it to cook for just a little bit. Then we will remove it to make our garlic butter and then we'll put everything back in. Okay, I pulled the steak off and I'm gonna add in a nice big 
piece of butter here. I'm guessing this is probably uh, three tablespoons or so worth. I'm adding in a few of my frozen minced garlic cubes. It's probably about the equivalent to three garlic cloves. Okay, our garlic butter is made over here. So I'm gonna put the steak bites back in first. Just going to toss them around in that garlic butter so they're coated well. And now I'm gonna throw back in our potatoes. This smells absolutely divine. It smells so good. So excited to eat this this week for sure. If you guys are interested in how I shop for meal preps like this one, you can check out this video here. Thanks a lot for watching today. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Chat with me in the comments. I love hearing all your inspiration and give this video a like and I'll see you guys in the next one.